Please hang up and try again. Buddy, um, we're gonna work on a program for read file in Java today, and as you can see, I'm changing from code IDE. I'm not using Dr. Java or Intel EJ, the one that you usually have in the regular classrooms. What I'm using right now is the Visual Studio Code. It's a tool for for um, for Macs that I have right now installed in my machine. I'm sure you can find something like that in your Windows machine or in your Linux machine. So I just want to let you know there's a couple changes in the actual way we're going to write the code and run the code in the environment that we're using. For example, right here, if you can see, we can have a piece of code, Yeah, usually the code area. And the output, what we're going to do, I can run this directly. There's a shortcut for that, but I will show you how to run it directly through the command line. This emulates a command line that we have in this IDE. So in my left hand side, you can see the outline of what we're going to describe today. <clears throat> and to my right hand side, you're going to see the current desktop that I have. For example, this file called read file example .java is this one that you can see right here to the right. And because of the purpose of today's lesson, we're going to read a file called sample.txt. I'm going to open, actually, let me see if I can do this. So sample.txt is a text file that I have with a couple of lines, uh, text per lines. So we're going to read this file today um, by using Java. So the very first thing that we need to do besides our uh, additional structure of Java is to incorporate a couple friends. Of course, every time we read the file or every time we actually interact with the user, we need to import java.util.scanner. So scanner is our friend that we've been using for the couple of lessons to basically interact with the computer user. However, scanner also provides the ability to read from the from the file and another library that we need to use is import java.io i'm going to use the wildcard to incorporate everything io is a library that we require in order to do the input output in this case we're going to read and, and, and write um, a file in java now there's an additional uh, line of code that we need to incorporate and is after actually after the public static void main string args here we're gonna incorporate throws io exception this library we need to incorporate after the main in order to handle situations in case the file is not there we're going to talk about a little bit more later on 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 when we deal with exception handling and only for the purpose of simplicity, I'm not going to discuss what this means, but you can know that you know every time you're going to read or write a file, we need to incorporate this throws IO exception. Just have that in mind, otherwise Java will complain. I will explain how it's going to complain later on. Okay, so the next thing is that we need to use scanner and its current methods that we know in order to read uh, the lines. So we're gonna typically at this point when we create a scanner object we use input equals new scanner. Now when we interact with the user if you remember we use here uh, system.in. This is in order to force Java to interact with the computer user. However, so we're gonna read a file we won't be able to use the system that in. Instead, we understand we need to create or we need to read a new file. And the name of the file that we're gonna read is called sample.txt, which is the file that I actually show you previously. One important aspect that 
we need to recognize is whenever you save the file that you want to write your code, the file that you are, you're trying to read must be in the same directory unless you specify the path. If you specify the path, then you will have to put it in the name of the file or the path. But for simplicity of purposes, we're going to assume that for every time we're going to read a file, it will belong to the same directory. So that's where we have it here. Very good. So now when we use a couple of, um, let's simple basically create a line, which is a string that will come directly from input.next line. You remember next line from previous assignments. Basically, input text line will read the line that is being handled by the scanner and it will be stored in the variable line. So we're gonna do we're gonna print the line so far so you guys can see what's happening. I'm gonna save this file and I'm gonna go here to the console down, down here in the terminal and I'm gonna compile um the file Java C is the Java compiler. That's why it's Java C. Uh, and I'm gonna compile the file read um, file example that Java. Of course, is not there. Let me see where am I? I need to change to the desktop. Okay, maybe this is that's what I was missing. I'm gonna do this again. I'm gonna compile it. When I compile it, you cannot see it, but here you generate the class file directly. So um, now I can run the program by calling Java read file example. This is so basically we read the first line. Now if we copy and paste the part when we read the line, we store it in line and then we print it again. Yeah and we compile the program and then run it. Now I'm gonna read the second line. This is first line, a file, second line. So if we're trying to read, I know what you're thinking, we're gonna read one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the most easy thing is to understand and explode your copy and paste techniques. So basically we have two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so by compiling this program again and by running it again, I read the entire file. So I know what you're thinking. Okay, so you might feel that now you were able to read the entire file, but in reality, it's a lot of redundancy. This is why in many books, when you read about how to read files is being incorporated in the same chapter when you read about loops because there's a lot of redundancy. That's why the next part is how to read the file by using loops. So obviously the redundancy is the body of the loop. If you remember in previous um, lessons, we need to identify the body, the repetition that we're gonna do. So that's considered to be the body. So the the actual read the line and the print the line. This is the repetition, so this will be the body of the loop. Now, if you remember, we need the four components of the file. We need the initialization. The initialization comes from the fact that we're gonna create a scanner object that basically will handle the file. So that's considered to be the initialization. And the second thing uh, is the check, which is the test in many books they call it. So we're gonna read the input file as long as has next. So has next is a sentinel. If you remember a sentinel, it's a statement that will give you a Boolean statement. A Boolean results can be either true or false. And Basically what we're saying here in line number seven is as long as there's more stuff to read from the file, if it's true, what you're gonna do is we're gonna create, well, we're gonna open the curly brackets, we're gonna read the line, then print the line, and we're gonna repeat that again. And I know what you're thinking, where is the update 
component. The update component in Scanner, every time you read the next line, you're updating the control variable, in this case will be the input, because it will read the next line and it will exhaust eventually all the lines that are going to read. So we combine the body of the loop, which is the decision here, with the update. Okay, we'll talk about a, uh, a little bit more about iterative structures later on. So that's it. Let's see. Let's save this document and then compile it and then run it. If you notice, we have the same result. Yeah. And this is by using the while loop. Of course, you can do this with a for loop if you want to do it. This is going to look a little bit weird. But that is okay because it's still a pre-test loop and that's actually how we read the file by using that loop. Um, that's pretty much it. So there's a couple of variations of this that we're going to discuss later on. I will put it in the continuation of this um, videos.